everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Deloitte Women's Premier League show. We are bright and early here as we are every weekend. And even though the league is on a break now, you know, the girls are at the Asian Games and the WPL girls are also taking a bit of a break. We are, however, still featuring guests every week as we do. And this week, we are joined, finally after a while, by the wonderful ladies at Gelang International. Welcome back to the show, Ira and Nadia as well. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining. having us. Thank you for having us. It's great to see you guys, you know, I mean, it's been a while since we had the Geelang International guest on the show. I know that you guys have first season on the, you know, in the league. So maybe you guys can catch me up and, you know, update me on, on how the progress has been and how are you guys feeling about your first season. So I think the first season has been a lot. Like, because um, it's a new team and we have, we have to meet new people and then like under new management and it's just a whole new thing for us. So um, I guess it's, just something that we have to get used to yeah. um, and also like it's a lot of our first time playing professionally as well which is oh. what makes it so special because it's like a great opportunity for a lot of us because you know you don't usually just jump into WPL like but um, some of us it's actually our first time even playing professionally or even, uh, so yeah it's a it's new a thing. It's just it's just a new thing for us. Yeah. For yourself, you know, how was your first season in the club? Uh, I think we had to adapt with a lot of things. Um, like what Nadia say, there's like new players. So when there's new players, there's like new players. Uh, they have different ways of playing. So, like uh, majority of us, we just met each other for the first time. Like what she said. Like, uh, many of us just started playing out. So I think we were struggling at the starting of the season because we were trying to find the way we are trying to mm. play. But I think as many games, um, we, after many games, we actually managed to like find the kind of play we wanted to. Yeah, it does take some adaptation, especially first season. I understand the pressures mm. as well. But I mean, good on you guys. Let's talk a little bit about your performance. So six points from 12 games, I know again, not the best, but at least you guys are not bottom of the table. So let's talk. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that. Um, what do you guys have to say about that? You know, how would you like to improve um, moving forward, or what kind of lessons would you like to take? You know, into the next couple of games. Um, I think we've always put our hundred percent effort in every game, despite the very shocking score lines. Yeah. But um, I guess like uh, we we know who uh, we know our standard and. Obviously, uh, going against very tough teams, like we always, I feel like we still put up a very good fight, this, uh, despite the losses and everything. But our win against Tampines and Steel Arian was like, it felt amazing. It mm. felt amazing. And our goal scorers were like Nani, Charlotte, and Laura. Who were, uh, Charlotte and Laura were like the youngest in the team. So it, it, just, felt, it, was, it just felt amazing after like the demoralizing losses and stuff. So. I guess it's a lot of up and downs and Ups and downs But at least the, the wins are You know, something you can take with you mm -hmm. To learn mm -hmm. from For yourself, any lessons that, that you know You, you learned especially in your first season? Uh, I think I agree with Nadia Because <laughs> um, we Like I said, the round one We were struggling a lot And the score lines were like yep. Quite bad <laughs> actually But I think after we won Like the Tempanis, Rovers and Aryan game uh, We actually managed to get some confidence Yep uh, with us, like, but uh, of course, like, there's like, you know, if you win, you're gonna lose at some yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we we don't always stay up basically. So even if we win, we we know that uh, against the tougher teams, we might not be able mm. to play very well mm -hmm. compared to the company. Yeah, anyway. it's ups and downs. And speaking yeah. of that, I just wanna ask you. I mean, we talk a bit about your, about your position a little bit. I know that you are playing a centre back and you a striker. These are two very important roles in the team, guys. So I just wanted to ask, like, you know, what got you playing in this position? Did you start playing in this role or, or was it a gradual thing? Um, I actually started out as a striker. Like, I wanted to play as striker because, like, the glory of win, uh, scoring and everything was... I mean, who didn't want the glory, right? Mm. Like, to score and everything. And then, like, we had... Um, I idolised people like Neymar, Ronaldo, Messi, and they were all attackers. You don't really hear about... Van Dyke, you don't really hear about Sergio Ramos that much when you think about the famous football players. So I was like, oh, I want to attack. Then my dad told me, why don't you play um, lower down, like centre defence? Then I was like, mm, I don't really hear a lot of centre backs or like centre defence who are good because you don't really hear about it much, especially when I was younger. Yep. 
So I was like, okay, how about I play winger? Yeah, like, like, okay, I'll go down. <laughs> I will go down. I'll play midfield. Then he was like, uh, okay. But <laughs> midfield is so tough. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll go. I'll go lower and lower. Yeah. So eventually got all the way to centre back, and I realised like, I love to play centre back. Yeah, it yeah. is a lot of running for for mm. definitely the roles that you're talking about. But centre back, I mean, I just wanted to say as well, there are some amazing centre backs mm-hmm. out there who have maybe won Ballon d'Ors as well. I mean, legends as well. So it's not right to say that they are not. You know, but I know the strikers always get the glory, right? Mm-hmm. So speaking of strikers, for yourself, um, is there a role that you relish, you know, that you always wanted to play in or? Uh, actually, I wanted to play defend. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys should swap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like when you're playing defend, when you are able to like, um, what's it called? Uh, when you are able to like, it's like save the yeah. ball, you know, I feel like it's an amazing feeling. But then uh, when I uh, actually started football in secondary school, so um, I was actually playing winger, like mm. left wing. But then uh, after some point of time, my coach was like, oh, you are run, you, you run, actually you can run very fast, so like why not you try the speed, yeah. yeah, striker. Then after trying, I think I kind of like striker, mm. being a striker, because like, um, you might get the glory, but I think like, you know when the last minute scoring, for like, yeah. like the winning goal. The clutch think, goal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, I like that. I like in women's football that it's still quite fluid. So I'm sure in the next couple of years to come, we'll see you guys play different roles. This is the way women's football is. It's never fixed. Which I think is great. You know, it keeps you guys learning and on your toes. And who knows, if you guys bring the national team one day, the coach might ask you to play a different position because he sees, you know, your potential in some way. But speaking of that, I want to ask you guys your story and how you got started in football because you mentioned your dad earlier on. I'm sure mm-hmm. he's been influ- influential in some way for you, right? So I started actually like during the 2014 World Cup. So that's where I heard about, you know, like oh, people talking about Neymar, people mm. talking about all the great strikers. They were like, oh, this person's got to go. So my schoolmates were all like talking about it and I just got very interested, like FOMO. <laughs> yeah, so everyone was talking about it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to... I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna watch also. Then my uh, so my dad's also a big fan. So I told my sister, okay, let's watch. So I rooted for Brazil and she rooted for Germany, which oh was yeah, not a good yeah, idea. which is <laughs> which is a bad idea. But I guess it sparked like that interest in me. So after that, I started playing FIFA with my dad. Mm. And so me, my sister, and my dad we played FIFA. Then between the three of us, we also had this game where we would play. That's like um, we would alphabetically name footballers. Like That's A so to cool. B, A B C, so like Antoine Griezmann, like Bruno Fernandez, yes. all the way to Z, and we'll play that game like every time. So I think that just sparked the interest in between me and my sister. Then my mom signed us up for classes at First Gate Academy. Yes. Yeah. So we played with boys. And yeah, it was it was just a great experience, and like that's where it all started. That's so cool. Yeah. Everybody has their first World Cup that they watch and their first memory. So yours was for twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. What was your like you know first I would say experience with football? Uh, secondary school. Oh. Yeah. I actually didn't want to join football. I actually wanted to join netball actually. <laughs> yeah, but my friends because like uh, we didn't have any soccer CCA for girls back then, so. Um, my friend actually put up a petition to ask our teachers to like open up the f- uh, soccer team soccer. for our school, yeah. And then actually initially um, there were only like thirteen people, which is like not enough. And we managed to actually get some girls to join. Mm. I was actually the last one to join because like I didn't know how to play football. And then when I tried playing football, um, it was actually quite fun, <laughs> yeah. It is very fun, especially when you're playing for fun. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> if there's nothing on the line, you're just having with your friends and all. I think that's the best thing about football, right? It's just not just, it doesn't have to be taken seriously all the time. But we are, we are quite serious now because we're in the WPL. But I just want to ask you guys as well, since we are having a bit of a league break, how are you guys, you know, taking the time out, you know, to sort of, uh, I guess, prepare for when the season resumes again? Um, so we've been going for our usual trainings as yep. per normal and we're like learning from all the things that we can improve on um, during the game. Then also we've been having um, friendlies organised for us by our coaches so that we can like put in what we learn during training and then also like prepare us for the next game. Yeah. So it's all prep right? Mm-hmm. And for yourself like you know Mm, you, um, yeah. Sometimes we actually go to the gym because uh, our club actually has 
like a gym membership for us. Yep. So like for example, like every Monday if there's nothing going on, then we pull out the group chat like who wants to go for gym. Oh. Then actually a number of us will actually go to the gym and do some strengthening. Yeah. Cool, yeah, I heard about that gym partnership. That's pretty cool actually mm. from Geelang. So, you know, <laughs> speaking of that, they also do have some very cool kids as you guys know. Uh, it's in the background. So, I just wanted to ask you guys, right? Like, um, if you had the choice, which kit would you prefer to wear? The one. The blue one? <laughs> <laughs> the blue one, huh? Yes. Yeah. You know, you should ask the men's team to donate the pink one as well because that's like yeah. hands down the best kit, I think. One of the be- better kits I've seen mm. um, in the league. Okay, so I just wanted to ask you guys as well. Let's talk a little bit about the other team and the league as a whole, right? Because you've played already 12 games now, so you've probably played every team in the league. So, I just want to ask you guys, is there any team that has stood out to you guys, um, you know, in terms of the way they play? Anyone who has really, like, wow, about you guys? I think Haogang. Yeah. They're a very, um, they're very underdog team. Like, uh, they're very, very strong, and I think they have a lot of potential, and uh, they have really, really strong players that I admire. Yep, Haogang was just our guest last week and they really want to win the league, that's all I can tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, any team that you st- 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 stands up for you as well? Yeah. Uh, I agree with Nadia, yep. but also I think Elbirex, because yep. their set pieces are really, really good. Like, they just need a few touch and then they can score. That's it, yeah. Really good, yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, <laughs> I mean, you guys experience it yeah. first. <laughs> So I can understand, you know, Albert is very strong as well um, and I'm interested to see as well how they do this year in the league. How about players? Anyone, you can just mention someone in your team or even someone you played against perhaps in a one-on-one? Mm, in our team, um, Ida. Mm. Yeah, the captain. She's, yeah, our captain. Like, she, like, we love her. Like, <laughs> yeah, we just love her. Yeah. She's been like the best captain. She's so responsible and you know, sometimes captains will put themselves on a higher pedestal mm. and they were like, ah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Ida, you Ida, she, yeah, she doesn't do that. She's like, she's just one of us. But she's very mature and yeah. And very, very positive as well. Yeah. That's something I noticed about her. Mm. You know, she mentioned as well a little bit about, maybe not her, but your coach as well mentioned that I think there was a period of time for you guys where things got a little bit out of hand where some of your maybe not you guys some of you were having anxiety attacks and mm-hmm. nervousness right so how did the club help you with that um, how did Ida perhaps did she help you with that to overcome all those like challenges yeah, after tr- usually after training she would like ask one by one like oh how are you feeling mm. I think our manager also did that but um, Ida she tried to understand a little bit more better because she she's also playing with us like mm. she's one of us and She's just like, she's been like our backbone since like day one. Yeah. So whenever whenever something's off, I feel like she, she knows. So she would always try to like check check up on us. And then she would, she would always try to find like solutions for us. Like, yeah. oh, if you're not playing better, then what can you do to make, to improve yourself? Mm. And also our manager also plays a huge part actually. She always tries to, um, she knows that some of us won't open up to her. So she will always check check through our captain. Mm. Okay, that's good to know. I mean, at least for that part, you guys are settled. I think it doesn't matter about the results, especially mm. first season. Just going to make sure that all the uh, wheels are in motion and so we can improve for next season. And speaking of which, I just want to ask you guys a little bit about your thoughts on the growth of women's football in Singapore and what you would like to see moving forward from our league and even from our, you know, our grassroots or wherever you guys are playing right now. Um, I think the growth of f- women's football in Singapore is, is there's been a lot of opportunities recently. Um, um, uh, like the UTR scholarship recently, uh, my sister is actually part of it. Oh, so she, uh, she, she got a scholarship to study in America and to play for football. So I think that was, that's really a big move because last time we didn't really have that much. Like we had issues finding for a girls team, there was like very little. Then um, there's all these like um, FAS cups where yeah. they're letting out the little kids play. It's like so cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's like a lot of pathways for all these girls to enjoy football. So yeah, I think that's a really big thing. Yeah. And for yourself, I mean like um, a little bit about your thoughts on the growth of women's football here. Yeah, I think it's actually going pretty well. Because back then, if you want to join any like um, academy or clubs, I think it's a bit tough to find 
like any teams back then. But then now, if you want to start up like football, you can actually join any. You can actually mm. easily find any clubs, and some they ever actually advertise on Instagram like oh yes. who wants to join us. So, I think it's a great opportunity for people who wants to start up football as like something new. Hmm. So you guys would just suggest to just try it out, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, there's so many options out there. Like, yeah. They just can go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to like many years ago, I would say. I mean, now women's football is growing in some way, but with the growth also comes some challenges. And I just want to talk a little bit about that because, as you guys know, Spain recently won the Women's World Cup, mm -hmm. and of course, they did a fantastic job. I'm sure you guys watched it. Um, but since then, there have been a lot of controversies and also some reforms that the team is trying to do in some way right um, in terms of trying to get change the system a little bit because of the president being like you know he was he was in you know involved in some controversy and of course players were talking a lot about mental health as well do you think that um this whole situation is fair for players i mean what's happening right now for spain i mean it's i think it's good that they are standing up for what is wrong and uh sorry what's right yeah yeah mm -hmm. and um, for them to sacrifice such a big thing, like um, some of the players actually stepped out from the World yep. Cup to go against the management. So I think for them to sacrifice such a big thing, it really shows how important it means to them. And it's not just like a small scale thing because if it were to happen to a man, mm. yeah, it will be a different story. La. So, yeah. Yeah, they did put their lives and their lines somewhat, mm. somewhat, right? And now they've all resigned, apparently, while waiting for more reforms to be taking place. Um, but what do you think about, about that? Mm, I think they are really brave actually. Because, <laughs> uh, because they are like professional players. So like whatever you say, um, might, is, it will reflect on you. Then you might actually get like sad or people will actually like throw hateful comments. Mm. But when they speak up about it, uh, I was pretty proud of them because uh, they weren't scared of or at all. And then uh, when they speak out, actually, uh, I was impressed that their voices were heard. So I back then, if this happens like ten years ago, I think they won't be heard, lah. But uh, when they spoke, I think a lot of people actually stood up with them. Mm. So I think it's a it's a good thing that um, women voices are being like heard, cause um, actually it's very tough when it comes to, like women, cause they usually they will cite men more than like mm. women. So. Um, I was happy that they actually get the recognition. Mm. And I guess you can't also deny the fact that they didn't win the World Cup. So once you win the World Cup, nobody's going to, you know, I would say avoid or would, would put you in a, bad, in, in a bad basket because at the end of the day, you've achieved that. So they deserve to get their voices heard. So I think this, uh, that's very mm -hmm. great to hear from you guys that you're behind them. Alright guys, you know, as we do in every episode before we go, we always have a message from you guys to all the your friends and maybe your followers out there. So I just want to say thank you both Ira and Nadia for joining me today. Thank and you know, I wish you all the best with Gilang International. Thank keep you. fighting and keep hustling. And I know it's tough, but with the toughness comes a lot of lessons as well. So hopefully you guys can improve. And alright, thank you so much guys for joining me. And of course, before we go again, a message maybe from you. Um, I hope that... <laughs> I hope that you guys continue to support us despite all the ups and downs in what we are going through. And thank you. Yay, that's so nice. <laughs> Gilang Bully. <laughs> Gilang Bully. And for yourself, a message as well? Um, I hope you guys will support us till the end of the season um, despite the loss. But um, we are always putting our 100% in. So. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Thank you so much, guys. And you know, as you said, just now, Gilang Bole as well. I wish you guys all the best for the season. And yeah, keep fighting, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course, do continue to watch more episodes of the Deloitte Women's Premier League show. We have it right here as well on this page and also on YouTube. I'm Ash, and I'll see you guys next time.